Now, I know what you're thinking. Is this a special edition, The Luke Beasley Show? Because it seems like I hijacked it. This is my sidekick for the day, one Luke Beasley. Great to be here. I'm hijacking your show. I'm here at your home base. It's because he likes the colors. He really loves those lights, which the rest of you do as well. Listen, we got something serious to talk about today. So the Conservative Political Action Committee, CPAC, it's been going on for the past few days, and there's a lot of crazy going on there. As a matter of fact, Perhaps the craziest thing I've seen so far is Elise Stefanik, Republican Congresswoman who, Luke, is rumored to be Donald Trump's likely vice presidential candidate. I want to play you a clip of what she had to say and how this has pervaded the Republican Party. Take a look. It's one I witness every single day when I defend President Trump from the deep state. And that is the way Democrats attack our democracy. We saw it with the Russia collusion hoax. Obama spied and then lied. We saw it with how they unconstitutionally rigged the 2020 election. We saw it when the deep state colluded with big tech and used taxpayer dollars to censor the accurate Hunter Biden laptop story. And we see it today as unelected liberals try to unconstitutionally remove Trump from the ballot. And let's remember, Democrats objected to every Republican president in the 21st century. This is the same justice system that shrugs off the worst corruption we've ever seen in the White House from the Biden crime family. Here is a rule of thumb that I know you will agree with. What the Democrats accuse us of, they are guilty of 10 times over. And here's why this really matters. If they weaponize the government against President Trump, they can weaponize it against you. What? Why? I I don't even know where... That was a minute and 20 seconds. I don't even know... Do you even remember, like, what to... (laughs) There's so much... Okay, you go ahead. What do you think? Well, first, a pretty stunning situation we're in where, let's be honest, what she just said applies to Republicans. So... We accuse them of that exact thing. A lot of times, accusations are confessions, projection, projecting onto us what they're actually doing, calling Biden a threat to democracy. But then she's saying we're projecting, so that when now we're saying she's projecting it's, by saying that we're projecting. It's like this weird feat. More projection from her Come up with your own line. Than a movie theater. Mm. More projection than a movie theater. But then, of course, on the facts of it, come on. The argument is, no, 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 we're not a threat to democracy because the guy that we're supporting last time tried to block the peaceful transfer power and it's called for the termination of the Constitution. The government should go after media outlets he doesn't like. They're the threat to democracy because of conspiracy theory mumbo jumbo. By the way, one thought I want to add and I'll throw it back to you, Josiah, is I think a lot of us on the left with the Hunter Biden stuff, we were like, okay, I guess it wasn't fair to say that was Russian misinformation because that was the line from them, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, liberals right before the election just wave that all away as Russian misinformation. And then, and then, what are we, years later, and it comes out that the informant that started this all has all these connections to Russian intelligence and was being fed these stories from Russian intelligence. It's like what I've been saying on my show is if back then you would come up with the most straw man of a lib sort of argument, it would be, oh, that's all fabricated. That informant, that 10, 10, 23, that informant's just making it all because he wants to hurt Biden politically. And also something about Russian spies. And then that has been what is manifesting. Yeah, so it is funny because here, here's the reality. Number one, there's so much, even with that, I mean, she crammed so much in those like 80 seconds, right? That in and of itself could probably merit its own episode of yeah. our new collaborative program that we're doing here apparently. But, because here's the thing, when that story broke, it did sound like, A nonsense Russian disinformation story. Uh, The president's son dropped off a laptop for repair to a Trump supporter uh, who was visually impaired, but he smelled the alcohol on Hunter Biden. And one thing, like, it makes sense why so Biden. That's that's one of those Biden alcohol. Like, I mean, I don't understand because even intelligence officers at the time are like, yeah, this sounds like Russian disinformation. It was dropped as an October surprise, right? strategically timed by the Trump campaign, which makes you think, well, if it was really legit, wouldn't you want to get it out sooner? No, the fact that you dropped it on October in October ahead of the election suggests that there's some nefarious play. And then to find out years later 
that the person who made many of the allegations against Hunter and Joe Biden actually does have ties to Russian intelligence. It's actually it's kind of ironic. But also remind me, who was who was um, who was president? Who was the president? I can't remember. Who's the president when that story broke? Well, based on what I'm told about the yeah. aftermath of COVID, who was president during the worst of COVID? Oh. <laughs> or the economic disaster that Biden had to inherit? No, no, no. Everything was going well. 2019 hit. Then Biden became president. Right. So I guess Biden in 2020? That, so yeah. So Republicans who struggle to understand the linear concept of time, they want you to believe that Joe Biden was in the White House in 2019. In fact, it was Donald Trump. Donald Trump was the sitting president. It was his Department of Justice that was tracking uh, potential Russian disinformation. No one censored the story. A decision was made by Twitter, a company. And I thought Republicans loved the right of business to do what they want. I thought that was a thing Now that's too. a violation of the First Amendment or something? I guess they briefly suppressed the, a specific link to the story for 24 hours because it had, what, a non-consensual nude photos of Hunter Biden on it, which violated the terms of service. And what, you know what's funny? We're talking about this. This is only one part of what she said. Like, there's yeah. the other nonsense. The fact that they unconstitutionally rigged the election. Democrats unconstitutionally rigged the election. What happened to all those court cases hmm. that, that Republicans Who is brought? quite literally responsible for interpreting the Constitution? I think it's the Supreme like Court. This. Supreme Court. And all of the courts, like you said, ruling against these claims. But first of all, so many good points. I think it's notable that now they're falling back on that. So originally it was... You know, big, big, massive dumps of ballots. That was the worst impression I've ever done. Um, massive dumps. There you go. And that a bunch of illegals were voting, as they would say. And all these claims about the actual machines being fraudulent or ballots being counted. A lot of them have stopped saying that because of how ridiculously evidence-free those allegations are. On the Fox <laughs> Dominion lawsuit. That 800, right. <laughs> and the $800 million law dollar lawsuit. Right. There's a clip of yeah. circulating on, on Newsmax of a host being like, we respect the results as legal and fair. Newsmax's official position is the 2020 election was free and fair. So apparently those lawsuits are actually making a difference. Good. But not for Mike Lindell. He's a warrior. He's charging forward. <laughs> um, but I think that's a sign that enough of the American population is like, oh my gosh, these election deniers are crazy. And they rejected them enough because even the crazies are referencing the worst of the allegations of like the machines being rigged or something and voting doesn't work anymore and they'll just pick Biden them they will um and they're sort of now trying to reference these other things there was big tech influence that sounds less conspiratorial even though it's just as conspiratorial and to your point the argument I've made is first of all like you said there was reason to block that story initially because of Poten and potential TOS violations that yes. had a good faith interpretation that it violated Twitter's terms of service. And then they act like it was blocked across all platforms until election day or after election False. Day. It got immediately reversed. And because it was blocked, I think it got more attention than it would have. The strike say about it. Yeah. People were like, why were they covering it up? And then tons of people started to look into it. And still, it didn't make a difference in the election. But they pretend like it was blocked. And that would have been the thing that swayed the election insane. I also want to point out, too, because, again, I mean, we've got other things. Because, the, again, this attitude that Elise Stefanik just articulated at CPAC, it is pervaded the Republican Party. And we, so I, I want to play some other clips, but the, there are other things that she said, too, that I, I feel merit, you know, refutation, which is this idea that, well, Democrats have objected to Republican victories in the past. It is true that in times past, one or two Democrats have made a symbolic gesture of defiance to the Republican victory. And listen, if you want to criticize that, fair enough. You can say that, you know what, listen, regardless of the outcome, you have to respect it. But one or two, when Donald Trump won and was his votes were certified in on January 6, 2017, there were a handful of Democrats who objected, but there were no formal objections because they could never get signatures from Democrats in the other chamber. In other words, Democrats were like, yeah, we don't like the Trump won either, but there's nothing really to formally object to. Whereas... After January 6, 2021, after the insurrection, more than 100 Republicans made formal objections to President-elect Biden's win. The false equivalence is just maddening. And 
to be clear, there's a difference between what used to be a thing, which was, I don't believe the president legitimate. Like, I don't feel like things were fair. That's not even in the same conversation as telling people that the voting process didn't work, that when you went in, your ballot was then thrown in the trash or there were fake ballots counted because that undermines democracy as a concept. It's not even working in the country is, is what you're asserting there. And that very quickly, as we've seen, can cause things to fall apart. That's different than on both sides. People say, I don't believe that's the legitimate president because if something was different, then it would have been different. It's just not even the same ballpark. And separate from objections in Congress, there has never been, never an attempt to allegedly illegal as these prosecutors are now uh, prosecuting Trump for prevent the peaceful transfer power through all these schemes. And one of the very notable ones being the fake elector scheme, where this is not something Democrats tried, Ever. contrary to the Ever. lies of people. They tried to just, they did get individuals, Republicans, to sign fraudulent forms saying, no, we're the real electors, and then try to get my pence to go, those are the real electors and Trump won the, the uh, White House. Just disenfranchising millions of voters and one guy with these fake electors picking the president. And then Trump was going to use that to justify staying in power. And then he had an idea about using quote unquote martial law, invoking martial law to then uh, implement that and make sure and force that by seizing control of the government with the military. Did you see that the Republican congressman who sent that text to Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, Ralph Norman's his name, all right? He's a far-right Republican, was asked recently by CNN, hey, do you regret asking the then-president to, like, <laughs> basically invoke martial law? A military coup. That's what I want and what, you remember, did you ever hear what he said? He's upset that he misspelled That's martial. his only regret, yep. Gosh, an autocorrect feature. That's it. That's, but he, Josiah. Wait. Wait, but Josiah. Biden's old. He is old. That's true. You so know never. Now, you know, I apologize. You might as well just cut this off. Who who cares about uh, well, ending it, democracy? Yeah, I don't know. We had other clips to play too. That's sad. Thing. I mean, this is again, this is eighty seconds, and I guarantee you, there's probably still more that we've just forgotten about mm -hmm. that there was worth addressing. But I do want to play this clip because the again, this attitude has pervaded the Republican Party, and poll after poll after poll shows that a disturbing number of registered Republicans and Republican aligned citizens. Do not believe that the 2020 election was legitimate. And if the, the polls are enough to disturb oh, you, gosh. you should see this clip because Trump supporters in South Carolina were just asked about the 2020 election and their responses are um, disturbing. Hey, we didn't rehearse that. <laughs> OK, go. <laughs> Take a listen to some of the answers of the of when I asked some of these voters, do you believe the 2020 result, uh, uh, the election results were legitimate? No. Why not? Are you kidding me? All the illegal, okay, absentee votes, all the illegal votes that were allowed, and all the illegal votes that showed up later? that were for Donald Trump that were not counted is a lie. Donald Trump is our president. Well, I, I stand by the fact that Joe Biden is my president, but I do have a lot of questions about it. What, what, are, what are your questions? Well, um, I know that Trump was leading in all these states very close to the edge and wake up the next morning and all of a sudden all the democrats won all those and i mean it's got you've got to ask yourself what's going on 2024 do you think there's any way that joe biden could legitimately fair and square win the election this time around are you joking <laughs> only if the illegal election happens again sure there's always a chance now, of course, there was no evidence of widespread voter fraud and legal attempts to overturn the 2020 election results failed. I mean, seeing to me, seeing the poll in the in the figure, the statistics yeah. are always sobering. But then seeing that in real time, that's that's different. That yeah. cuts different. Well, as you know, one of my uh, one of the things I'm known for is going to Trump rallies and talking to Trump supporters. You recognized her, didn't and, you? That's what uh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, it's been hey. a while. Um, and one of the things that happens, so there's the fun element because these crazy moments. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so interesting. People are going to be fascinated by it. And then sometimes I'll feel like I debated well. Oh, yeah. And then always driving away or flying away, I'm like, oh my God. Like we said, disturbed. I'm a little bit depressed by it. 
you see that. And again, some of it's ha ha dumb. But then the second part of your brain goes, oh gosh, those are a people. bunch of people like that who are just as American as we are, believe that. And it shows you just the sheer power of misinformation of a movement dedicated to a person and not facts or principles at all and the failure in our education system i guess no i mean 100 percent. and again I, the, the the sad thing is and you can hear it in the responses the 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 other lady they're the more reasonable one kind of makes a caveat that you know even though she thinks the 2020 election was stolen or she has questions about it, she at least concedes, and it's so sad that this is how low the bar is, she at least concedes that there is a timeline in the multiverse in which Joe Biden can win a free and fair election against Donald Trump. But the other one, she can't even conceive of it. That's the scary thing. It's not just that you, for no good reason, thought the 2020 election was stolen. That is bad enough. It's that you're so lost that you can't conceive that Donald Trump is so perfect. He's so popular. He's so commanding. He's just whatever he is to you that you can't even conceive of a universe in which he loses, even though I have done good faith that he has lost 2018, 2020, 2021 with the Senate runoffs, mm -hmm. 2022, 2023. Yeah, I feel like he's lost more than he's won for his party, right? Yeah, I, there's there's few people who have been, you know, logically to blame for as many losses as Donald J. Trump, but they don't see it. And I didn't hear cries of the elections being stolen in 2022. So how is it not logical that the party would do way worse than people expected in 2022, but Trump could never lose? And it's just all well, and that I think you teed this up perfectly because there is one more clip I want to show. Around. We'll stick around of Donald Trump basically engaging in that cognitive dissonance himself Oof. during a recent interview with Laura Ingram, where he takes the position: listen, any time, any time, any time, according to Donald Trump, there is mail-in ballots or absentee ballots. The entire election is inherently fraud, except there's a catch. Forward. If you have mail-in voting, you automatically have fraud. If you have okay, well, there's mail-in voting in Florida, That's and right. you won huge. That's right. If you have it, you're going to have fraud. But you won. Because so even Laura Ingram is like, well, no, no, wait, 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 not, not, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> That's right. Even in Florida, when I won, there was fraud. You vote by mail, you goof. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand. But folks, this is where we are. This is. There is a great book called Tyranny of the Minority, which I would encourage you to check out, written by two political scientists. And they have diagnosed the Republican Party as being a threat to democracy in large part because this, this complete unacceptance, this, this unwillingness, rather, to accept the possibility that they can win free and fair elections. And so when they lose, they say the election is rigged. If that's the inherent operating principle for your entire party, and it seems to be, and there's no real meaningful pushback from it. Um, I don't know where we go from here, especially because we live in a duopoly. This is why, in my opinion, Republicans have to be punished relentlessly at the ballot box every damn time in every damn place. Luke, what do you think? Absolutely. I know we have to wrap up. If you're liking what you're seeing in here, you can find me at Luke Beasley on YouTube. Thanks for having me, Josiah. Hey, Luke, appreciate you being here, buddy.